Hi guys, welcome back to La Danza Crochets. In this tutorial, we're going to be making this fabulous high-low skirt. I hope you're going to enjoy making it. If you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe and let's jump into the tutorial. I'm going to be mixing th these three shades of lilac. I'll use a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need two stitch markers, a dunny needle, a pair of scissors and a measuring tape. I'm going to leave information in the description box with everything that you're going to need for this particular tutorial. You're going to need the following measurements and I'm measuring mine in inches. So we have the waist measurement, the hips, the front length and the back length. Now you're taking your waist measurement, which is 30 minus 15, and this will be 15. So I'm going to work 15 inches when not stretched, when I'm working my waistband. Then we'll, we're going to increase until we get to 43 inches on the hips. As for the front length, you're going to take it minus 5, and this will be 13. So I'm going to work 13 inches before working the ruffles. Same as the back length, which will be 33 minus 5, which is 28. So I'll work 28 inches before I start working the ruffles. Because the ruffles will take a length of 5 inches. And that is where we are subtracting the five from the front and the back length. So get those measurements and let's get into it. Get your yarn and begin with a slip knot. This is how I make my slip knot. Twist your yarn over the index finger, pull it through, put the longer side of the yarn under the circle, then pull that loop and pull to fasten. That's our slip knot. Then we're going to make a chain of 12. Twelve chains. Then we're going to begin working stitches all through the, the chains that we've done. And to do that, we begin by holding the twelve, the twelve stitch. Then chain one more. Put your hook through that stitch that you're holding. Grab a loop. Then pull through. You have two loops. Pull the loop that you just grabbed through the loop that you already have on your hook. That's our first slip stitch. Go into the next chain. Pull a loop. And pull it through the stitch that you have on your hook. For the second slip stitch. Into the next chain. Grab a loop. And pull it through. Go into the next chain. Grab a loop. Pull through. Into the next one. Grab a loop and pull through, and you're going to work slip stitches all the way through to the end, through to the end of the chain. At the end, you should have 12 slip stitches. Do not tighten your work because if your work is too tight, it will be very difficult to work the next row. So just go on, place one slip stitch into every chain to the end of row one. That's row one done. We chain one, chain one, and turn to begin row two. We begin row two in the first stitch, and we're going to be working the back loops. We want a ribbed um, waistband. So into the back loop of the first stitch, yarn over, pull a loop, and then pull through the loop that you had on the hook. Into the next back loop right here. Grab a loop and pull it through. For the second slip stitch, go into the third back loop and slip stitch. Into the fourth and slip stitch. And we're going to slip stitch for a total of 12 slip stitches by the end of row two. If working slip stitches is too hard for you, you can opt for single crochets instead of slip stitches. But then if you work with single crochets, you're going to work until you have a waistband that will be your waist length minus 10 inches. When you're working with the slip stitches, we're taking the waist length minus 15. Now right here is my last my last back loop, so into that loop, slip stitch, slip stitch. 
you can count your stitches to make sure that you've gotten 12 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so i have my 12 slip stitches and row 2 is done chain 1 and turn to begin row 3 again we begin in the back loop of the first stitch slip stitch right there into the next back loop do a slip stitch and, and we're going to do a slip stitch into every back loop at the end make sure that you have 12 slip stitches or 12 single crochets whatever you choose to work with We're done with row three, chain one, turn to begin row four, begin in the first stitch and work all the way down to the end of row four. And we're just going to be repeating this row until we get the length of your waist minus 15. In my case, my waist is 30. So I'm taking 30 minus 15 to get 15. So I'll work a, a waistband that is 15 inches in length when not stretched. Chain one and turn to begin row five and keep going until you get the desired waistband. My waistband is ready and I did a total of 102 rows in order to achieve my waist length. And I'm going to measure this. Like we said, we're measuring without stretching. So place your... And right there, I'm um, at 15 inches without stretching. Now, this waistband is very stretchy and it can stretch out to get to your waist length plus an addition of a few inches that will allow it to go over your shoulders. So if I were to stretch this out, let's see how far it's going to get me. So I needed 30. And after stretching, it's going to beyond 30. Sorry. So let me show you i'm here at this point then i'm going to stretch and see it can go up to 32 so make sure you can you, you still stretch it out and ensure that it actually fits your waist length after this we're going to connect the waistband into a round so chain one put the two ends together like this and we're going to join using single crochets the corresponding stitches we begin with this first one right here and you're working the bo both loops in the joining part so go into that into the both loops of the first stitch right there and then the first stitch on the other side we're putting them together and we join in with a slip stitch you can all, you can join with a single crochet it doesn't matter what you use then you go into the next stitch the second stitch and then the second stitch on the other side grab a loop and pull through into the third join it with the third on the other side and slip stitch the fourth And the fold on the other side and then you're going to join every corresponding stitch i'm in the last stitch now and join right there with the last slip stitch and there we have our round this is the wrong side then the other side will be the right side so chain one and turn your work to the right side like that that's our waistband don't worry if it looks too small of course like we've said it stretches 
Now we start making the main part of the skirt. And for beginners, we're going to place a half double crochet into every uh, slip stitch row. So this is the first row, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And we're going to place a half double crochet all the way around till you come back to the starting point. For to do a half double crochet, you yarn over, go into that first row. I'm going to be working over this tail into that first row, grab a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all the three. That's our first half double crochet. Yarn over, go into the next row right here. I hope you can see that, this one right here. Grab a loop, then yarn over, pull through the three. Yarn over, go into the next row. At this point, grab a loop, yarn over, pull through into the next one right here place a half double crochet then place a half double crochet into the next row and into all the rows so if you had a total of 102 like me at the end of this you should have 102 half double crochets if you had 100 you should end up with 100 half double crochets if you had 150 you should end up with 150 half double crochets so just go on, place one stitch till you get to the end of row one of the main part of the skirt. I've worked my stitches to the last row and to complete row one, we're going to slip stitch on top of the first half double crochet right here. So go into through the two loops, grab a loop and slip stitch to complete row one. Now to begin row two, you chain one and turn. At this point, we're going to need to mark the points of increase in order to achieve our hip measurement. So get your stitch markers, get that point and hold your skirt like this. This is the complete middle of the skirt. Bring it together with this starting point, like that. Now these are the points that you're going to mark, this point right here. Mark that stitch on that corner. Is it a corner? Then mark this other stitch right here. And those will be our points of increase in order to get the hip measurement. Now, because we've already chained one, we've already chained one and turned. So now we begin working row two. In this first stitch, you have this stitch on one side and this stitch on the other side. Now these two are just one stitch. So you need to be very careful at the beginning point. As you can see, we have the loop. Then we have, this looks like a stitch and this looks like another stitch. But then this, the two of them are just one stitch. So when you work in your rows, make sure that you only work in one of them. Because if you work in both, you'll be increasing, a, you'll be adding a stitch in every row and that is not good. So to ensure that I do not work on both, what I do is I yarn over and I work in this one that is at the back. So instead of going into this one, I go into the one that is at the back right here, grab a loop, then yarn over, pull through the three loops. That's our first half double crochet. Now, because we've already worked in this one at the back, we don't work on the one at the front. So we skip over to this one right here and place a half double crochet. Place a half double crochet into the next stitch, into the next, and into all the stitches until you have one stitch before the stitch marker.
So you have this one stitch before the stitch marker and what you do is we work two half double crochets into this stitch. So one and two half double crochets into the stitch next to the stitch marker. Pull out the stitch marker. Place one half double crochet into that stitch that had the stitch marker. Get your stitch marker and mark that stitch again. You're going to keep marking until you've increased and gotten in a, the length of your hips. Then into the stitch that is next to the stitch marker, place two half double crochets. So that means we are placing two before the stitch marker, one at the point of the stitch marker, two after the stitch marker. Then all the other stitches till you get to the next stitch marker, we will just get one half double crochet. I'm at the stitch before the stitch marker, so I place two half double crochets there for an increase. Pull out the stitch marker. Place one half double crochet into that stitch, then mark that point again. Into the next stitch, place two half double crochets for an increase on the other side of the stitch marker. Then all the other stitches till we get to the end we'll get just one half double crochet i'm in my last stitch and so we slip stitch on top of the first half double crochet to complete row two chain one and turn row three is going to be the same as row two and all the other rows until we hit our hip measurement so remember the two stitches right here you yarn over and work in the one at the back yarn over skip this one the one next to the one that you've just worked then work into this one one half double crochet till you get to the stitch marker or till you get to one stitch before the stitch marker At the stitch right before the stitch marker, place two half double crochets. Remove the stitch marker. Place one half double crochet there. And mark that point again. So you're going to continue marking that point and continue increasing on both sides of the stitch marker. The stitch before and the stitch after. So this one here gets two half double crochets. Then the next one, or the other ones, one half double crochet. Increase into this stitch and this other stitch. At the end, slip stitch. Then you're going to begin the row the way we've done row two and row three. And we're going to keep going till we hit our hip measurement. When you're measuring the hip, we stretch out a little. So let me work a few rows, then I'll come back and show you how to measure the hip. The hips this is what i have after six rows and at this point we're going to measure as you can see it's expanding and sort of curving which is okay so now we're going to measure the hip measurement and because it's folded into two you're dividing your hip measurement by, by two so if your hip measurement was 40 you divide 40 by 2 to get 20 mine was 43 so I'm taking 43 by 2 to get 21. So when I give this a bit of a stretch, it should get me to 21 inches. So let's see if that's going to happen um, at 18 without stretching. And as you can see, it should be 21.5 actually. 21.5 is half of 43. So when I give it a stretch, it's taking me up to 20. You don't stretch too much. You only stretch a little bit and i feel like once i increase in one more row i'll get to 
21.5 so let me do an increase in row 7 you're going to keep increasing if you hit, you've hit your hip measurement then you stop increasing because i haven't i'll continue increasing in the seventh row after the same seven rows we measure again and now it's stretching up to almost 22 and that's okay so now once you've hit your hip measurements you don't need the stitch markers anymore remove them and from row 8 till you get the front length mine is 18 minus 5 which is 13 and you measure the length without stretching like this so at this point um at almost five inches so i'm going to work one row uh, a row not a row but rows i'm going to work rows of just one half double crochet into every stitch until i get a length of 13. i'm at almost five so i'll keep going till i get to 13. once i get the length the front length then i'll show you what to do next so keep going get your front length and then let's meet once you have it so that we can continue from there so now just one half double crochet into every stitch and keep repeating I did a total of 32, 33 actually, I did a total of 33 rows to get to my front length and I was working a front length of 13 inches. So we're going to measure that and we're measuring without stretching. Remember that you measure the waist, uh, the height without stretching. Well, as you can see, I'm at 13 point something, which is okay. So we're going to work with that. The front length is done and I cut off the yarn at this point at the back part. If you're working with the same color continue working with that color but you'll need to cut off at this point now then you're going to turn your work to the right side uh, to the front part this is the front part and this is the back part of the skirt you can see the hem right right there hold your skirt such that the points of increase where we increase are on the sides as you can see my work don't hold your work like this hold it with the sides where you increased such that it's it's perfectly facing you on the front part like this then you're going to get your measuring tape and measure the front length the front width that is you're measuring without stretching and when i do my width or the half of the of the front that is the front part is around 19 19.5 so get that measurement and divide it by three the front measurement of the skirt divided by three i'm going to use 19 so i'll take 19 divided by three which should give me six point something i'll work with 6.5 i'm working with an estimate it doesn't have to be accurate so 6.5 i'll measure 6.5 on this side right here you're going to get the 6.5 and get your stitch marker and mark this point So the 6.5 mark if your length is 18 when you divide it by 3 it should be 6 then you're going to count the number of stitches from this corner 1 2 up to the point where the stitch marker is then you're going to go onto the other side and count the same number of stitches so i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 and 22 so from this other end i'm going to count 22 stitches starting with this one at the corner so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 and 22 then you're going to mark the 22nd stitch right there then we're working on this side so I'm going to turn my work and I'll begin working from the stitch that is next to the stitch marker. At this point, I'm going to change to my second color because I'm working with the shades of 
lilac if you're working with one shade then just continue with it so i'll grab my yarn put my hook through the stitch next to the stitch marker then pull the yarn through leaving a tail of course we're going to work over the tail then you're going to chain one at that point then into this stitch that you're working you're going to put your hook through without turning over and pull a loop like you're working a single crochet but do not complete the single crochet then you're going to yarn over go into the next stitch yarn over pull a loop now you have four loops on your hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through all the four loops and we've worked a reduction like we've joined the first and the second stitch together now we're going to continue working in half double crochets into every stitch and you're going to work one half double crochet into every stitch till you have two stitches remaining before you get to the next stitch marker so work till you get to this point with one half double crochet i'm working over the tail just to ensure that i do not have too many ends to weave in at the end of the project Once I get to this other tail, I'll still work over it and I'll go all the way around to two stitches before the stitch marker. So we're going through the second last stitch and pull a loop. Then into the last one, just go straight in without yarning over and pull a loop. You have four loops, then yarn over and pull through all the four for that reduction. Chain one, turn. We begin with another reduction. So we're going to go into the first stitch and pull a loop without yarning over. Yarn over, go into the second one, pull a loop, then yarn over, pull through all, then place one half double crochet into all the other stitches until you have two stitches remaining. Then at that end, we're going to work a reduction. At this point I have two stitches remaining so I'm going to reduce so yarn over go into the second last pull a loop grab a loop into the last stitch then yarn over and pull through all the four loops chain one and turn again we begin with a reduction so we're always going to begin with a reduction and end with a reduction pull a loop like you're working a single crochet but you're not going to complete it then yarn over go into the second stitch and pull a loop then yarn over pull through all and then we're going to work one half double crochet into all the other stitches until we have two stitches remaining and then at the end we're going to work a reduction and this is what i'm going to work or what i'm going to be doing for the next uh like for the next number of rows until i have 26 inches at the back that is the back length until my back length is at 26 inches i'll just keep working these rows with a reduction at the beginning and a reduction at the end now keep going if you're working just one color you can go until you have the full length or the full back length that you want but then i'll meet you once i'm done with my 26 inches because i need to change into the next color keep going and see you at that point So I've worked a total of 36 rows with this second color to get to 26 inches, a length of 26. So let's measure and confirm that. So we're measuring from the waist right here, all the way down to that point. And as you can see, we are 26. I was supposed to work up to a length of 28. And then the remaining five inches in order to get to 33 is to be covered by the ruffles. So at this point, I'm going to cut off this color and then attach the, the third one. So I'll chain one and cut off the yarn. Then pull through 
and fasten now this is how i'll hold my project as i attach the next color if you're working with a single color you're just going to continue working so get your yarn i'll get my yarn go into the first stitch and pull the yarn through leaving a, a, a short tail that you're going to work over then we chain one chain one and we're going to work a reduction at the beginning so single crochet in complete one yarn over into the next stitch half double crochet then pull through all the loops for that first reduction all the stitches between between will get one half double crochet until you have two stitches remaining as usual and then at the end we'll do a reduction I have these two stitches remaining, so do a reduction there, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull a loop, go into the last one, pull a loop, then yarn over and pull through all, chain one, and turn. We begin with a reduction and end with a reduction. Now, because I want to get to 28 inches, I'm going to work a total of six rows. I think six rows will get me to 28 inches. After the six rows, I'm um, at 28, right there. And now I'll start working on the ruffles all the way around this part. What we do is at that end, chain one, and then we're going to work single crochets all the way around. And this is how we go about it. In the first row, we are working on the rows. This is the first row. In that first row, we're going to place one single crochet. Into the next row, two single crochets. Into that into that same row, the next one, one single crochet. The next one gets two single crochets. The next row will get one single crochet. Then the one that follows gets two. Then one and two single crochets. And we're going to keep alternating between one single crochet and two single crochets till we go all the way around and get to this point. Well, when we get to these stitches, we're just going to place one single crochet into the stitches, but on the rows, we alternate between one single crochet, two single crochets into the next one. So I'll meet you right here. I've worked single crochets to this point and now we're going to start working the ruffles and begin by chaining four and turn your work then into this stitch that has the four chains you're going to yarn over and place a double crochet right there then chain one into the next stitch place a double crochet 
chain one, go into that same stitch with another double crochet, chain one, into the third stitch, place one double crochet, chain one, go into the same stitch with another double crochet, then chain one, into the fourth stitch, we're going to place a double crochet, chain one, another double crochet, chain one, a third double crochet. So the fourth stitch gets three double crochets with a chain in between. Uh, the next, we chain one into the fifth, a double crochet, chain one, another double crochet. And you're going to work three of them, this, the next one, and the third one. Chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch, chain one, into the next one, to the next stitch, double crochet, chain one, go back into the same stitch with a double crochet. Those are three clusters of two double crochets with a chain in between. So we work the one that has the three double crochets into the next stitch, chain one, chain one, another double crochet, chain one, a third double crochet. Into the next stitch, chain one, then into this one, you're going to place two double crochets for the next three. One, two, and three. Then the next one, three double crochets with a chain in between. Then repeat the pattern. We're going to repeat the pattern all the way around and we're going to work till we get to this stitch next to where we've started. I've just worked two stitches with the two single two double crochets and into the last one I'll just place three of them. I'll place three double crochets into the last stitch. Then I lost part of the recording that shows how to complete row one and begin row two. So I'm going to use this smaller version that I made. At the end of row one, you chain one and then count three chains one two and three in the third chain do a slip stitch and that completes row one then you're going to chain four and turn your work and then yarn over and do a double crochet on top of the second double crochet right there chain one on top of the next double crochet do a double crochet chain one a double crochet onto the other double crochet chain one and this is basically what we're going to repeat just a chain and a double crochet so every double crochet from the previous row will get a double crochet and then we're going to have a chain in between any two double crochets and you're going to repeat this to the end of row two at this point i'm at 1.5 so i'll keep working till i get to five inches after doing the last double crochet we chain one and then we complete the row by counting three chains one two and three into the third chain work a slip stitch to complete row two then chain four and turn your work then now we continue working the double crochets on top of the previous double crochets and separating them with a chain till we get the length that we want so i've worked six rows on the ruffles and this is what i have and the skirt is done we are done in the skirt Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this tutorial if you liked if you enjoyed the tutorial kindly give this video a like leave a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed and see you in the next one